Hello, I'm Camilia, and this is Kini News. Anwar has told Hamza Zainuddin to watch his full interview with CNN. This came after Hamza brought up the interview in the Dewan Rakyat today. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has advised opposition leader Hamza Zainuddin to watch his full interview with CNN's Christian Amanpour for a detailed explanation of the Madani economy. Anwar said the Larod MP, as a former minister and elected representative, should not rely on cut and paste parts of the video to criticize him. Merujuk kepada kemubual dengan Christian Amanpour CNN, saya syorkan yang Muhammad Tanjung lihat keseluruhan temu bual itu dan tidak cut and paste yang dibuat ya dan kita telah pun tunjukkan yang dikeluarkan oleh CNN International dan CNN America yang memberikan liputan sepenuhnya jawapan tetapi ada unsur-unsur yang kianat yang sengaja memotong dan menunjukkan bahawa tidak ada jawapan yang lengkap Earlier, Hamza had asked Anwar to explain how the new Madani economy framework was different from the Shared Prosperity Vision 2030 introduced during the Pakatan Harapan administration four years ago. Hamza had said that Anwar's unsatisfactory answer during the interview had led to the question. Anwar explained that Madani economy policy under his administration is based on economic sustainability and physical development, coupled with values and courtesy. He said the context of the country is different post-COVID-19, and they accepted the fact that they are dealing with difficult-to-grasp situations, some of which happened at the same time. Anwar also agreed that efforts should be made to provide further explanation to the people about the Madani economy for better understanding. The image allegedly showing APN lawmaker vaping while in the Dewan Rakyat has been brought up again, this time by several opposition lawmakers who called for action to be taken against Anwar's photographer. Perikatan National MPs have called for action to be taken against Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's photographer. This was over an image allegedly showing APN lawmaker vaping while in the Dewan Rakyat. PN's chief whip, Takiyuddin Hassan, said immediate action should be taken against the photographer for violating Section 347 of the Houses of Parliament Privileges and Powers Act 1952. Section 9. Akta 347 ini salah satunya ialah uh, E. E ini mencela mana-mana ahli yang datang ke majlis dan meninggalkan majlis. Baik. Sekarang ini terbukti seorang juru foto daripada pejabat Perdana Menteri yang telah mengambil uh, secara salah gambar ini dan diviralkan. Jadi persoalan di sini adakah juru foto pejabat Perdana Menteri juga menjadi paparazi di dalam parlimen ini? Menjadi paparazi, tengok siapa buat salah dengan cara yang berunsur fitnah. He added that he hoped Parliament can enlighten whether they will call the photographer up. Takiyuddin was commenting on an image of Tanah Mera holding a cylindrical object to his mouth in the Dewan Rakyat. After the photo went viral, Iqmal refuted claims he was vaping and claimed that the object in question was a pen. Earlier, Iqmal had cited a letter from the speaker which said that no action will be taken against him as it cannot be ascertained whether he had vaped and questioned if CCTV visuals had been reviewed or if the photographer who took the picture had been called up. He claimed that his reputation had been tarnished and called on the speaker to reprimand outsiders against making things viral if it has been proven that he did not vape. Former Goldman Sachs banker Roger Ng has arrived in Malaysia. According to the IGP, the police will begin their probe into his links with the 1MDB scandal. The police will begin their investigations into former Goldman Sachs banker Roger Ng. This is in connection with the 1MDB scandal. Inspector General of Police Razanuddin Hussein confirmed the matter when contacted by Bernama today. Yesterday, the police had confirmed that Ng arrived in the country to assist with investigations into the case. However, they did not disclose the location due to security reasons. Previously, it was reported that Ng, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison in the United States in relation to the 1MDB scandal, would be handed to Malaysia to face related charges. He will be required to begin his prison term upon returning to the U.S., 
Home Minister Sefuddin Nasution Ismail was quoted as saying that the duration that Ng will be staying in the country depends on the investigation process. He said the government's focus is on asset recovery and they will leave the investigations to the enforcement agencies. Azalina has stressed that the government is taking serious steps to ensure that the separation of roles of the AG and public prosecutor can be implemented. She said this while giving the latest update on the move today. Law and Institutional Reform Minister Azalina Othman Said has given an update on the latest progress towards separating the role of the public prosecutor and attorney general. She told the Dewan Rakyat that a special task force conducting a comparative analysis of nine countries on the separation of powers will table its results on Wednesday. She said of the nine countries being studied, seven countries have a separate public prosecutor, while the other two countries maintain their attorney general as public prosecutor. England and Wales eh, mengambil masa lebih kurang 8 tahun untuk mewujudkan Director of Public Prosecution dan Crown Prosecution Service yang mengambil alih pendawaan daripada polis. Kemudian kalau kita tengok di Kenya pula, Director of Public Prosecution pada 2011 selepas perlembagaan baru bagi Kenya buka kuasa pada 2010, perlembagaan baru ini tersebut digubah selepas pelan raya Kenya pada tahun 2007. Azalina explained that each country required different durations to implement their models which had to be compatible with their respective contexts. After the Comparative Analysis Task Force has completed their job, the second task force on technicalities, legal, human resources and finances will commence phase two of the process. She said at this stage, the federal constitution and 19 other laws must be amended to allow the separation process. Isham Jalil said he is willing to engage in a debate with Zahid. Isham said this in response to Zahid's remarks in an interview with Berita Harian. Amno Supreme Council member Isham Jalil said he is willing to engage in a debate with party president Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. He said this in response to Zahid, who in an exclusive interview with Berita Harian said his critics should debate with him if they are man enough. However, Isham said the debate must be held on a neutral ground rather than at the Supreme Council meeting. In a post on Facebook, he said if he debated Zahid on his turf, that would be biased and unwise. He added that he is willing to resign from his Supreme Council position if Zahid wins the debate. But if he wins, the latter should conduct a referendum or election for the president's post. Earlier this year, Zahid said he was ready to fight for the president's post, but later a motion was passed for the party's top two positions to not be contested. Meanwhile, Isham has been very vocal against Amno working with DAP in the coalition government. He had previously claimed that he would be sacked for his opinion, but no such thing occurred at the Amno Supreme Council meeting last month. The court has ruled that UM activist Wong Yan Ke will have to pay a 5,000 ringgit fine. This was over his protests during UM's convocation in 2019 against the university's former vice chancellor. <laughs> The Kuala Lumpur Magistrate's Court today fined activist Wong Yan Ke 5,000 ringgit for deliberate insult and disruption of peace in the case linked to his protest against former University Malaya Vice Chancellor Abdul Rahim Hashim. In passing the verdict, Magistrate Ili Mariska Kalizan said the defense had failed to raise a reasonable doubt regarding the charges against Wong framed under Section 504 of the Penal Code. The former University of Malaya Association of New Youth chairperson was then slapped with a 5,000 ringgit fine or in default three months in jail. Wong's lawyer said he would pay the fine but would appeal against the decision. Meanwhile, Wong said the court decision made today is not an individual battle but a battle between multiracialism and racialism. In 2019, Wong had caused a scene during UM's convocation while protesting against Rahim, the varsity's then vice chancellor, for alleged racist remarks. He later said that part of his protest was against Rahim's speech during the controversial Malay Dignity Congress on October 6, 2019. 
In his speech, Rahim allegedly claimed that the change in government after the 14th general election had eliminated Malay political dominance and asserted that Malay privileges were being questioned. Rahim also allegedly warned others not to challenge the social contract. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to miliciakini.com. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.